guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight, we're back here with Puppet History. Tonight, uh, we're going back to France for another history lesson. Today, we got the scandalous life of France's bisexual opera icon. I actually did look at the thumbnail. Julie D'Angie. I guess I remember this lady, but... And again, extra history, just like the Nika riot. So I don't remember the details, so... I'll see if my knowledge from the extra history helps here more than it did in Nika. I only missed two that time, so... See how things go here in this uh, story of Julie Delagy. Shall we? Be sure to like Scott for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Oh, I saw got popcorn. Well, welcome one and all to Puppet History. Today we'll be taking an overwinding look at yet another, yet another chapter, chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call History. While our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Wizard. I'm your beloved host, the Professor. Thank you for Ryan Bergara. Are you ready, pal? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, special that guest, Quasi James. Are you ready? What Quasi up? I am so ready. All right, Quasi? then okay. let's crack in. Oh, I'm not sure you say that. How are you doing, you silly little bitch? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Hey, Ryan, are you used to this energy? What the fuck is going yeah, on Yeah, you kind of get used to it. <laughs> yeah, he's got kind of... Uh, Speedballing. Yeah, he knows, there's, who knows what he does behind that theater, but I think we have an you idea. Got a lot of cocaine in that satchel. Yeah, there's a lot going on over here. Those eyes are wide Yeah, dude, open. look at those pupils. Oh, you trying to flashlight in that bad boy? ain't moving man. at all, baby. Don't get pulled over, baby. <laughs> yeah. You've been up all night. I was up all night studying. Grams and ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? Let's just take the whole bag. Wow, well, we're having fun here, but all right, let's get. Let's, now for the drugs. Let's hop in. All right, now to begin. Hey, do any of you guys like opera? Sure. Oh, oh. Listen to it all the yes? time. Well, these days opera isn't exactly cool, but if you go back far enough, opera singers were basically pop stars. Our subject today is a famous opera singer who set the bar for a cool pop star so high, for my money, it still hasn't been topped. Today, huh? we're talking about Julie Dabeny, a.k.a. La Maupin, the opera star oh my that makes Miley Cyrus look like Hannah Montana. <laughs> okay, that's just rude. That's, 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 that's a big shot. I don't know about Miley Cyrus catching a stray I'm here saying, in puppet history. The that's fuck did Miley do to you, dude? <laughs> yeah, We've dude. got bad blood. She knows what she did. <laughs> he was the original writer of Wrecking Ball. Well, Julie Dabeny was born outside of Paris, France, in 1673. Of I think. Look, uh, there's a lot of mystery surrounding Jules, even for her most basic biographical information. So, I'm gonna try my best, and you'll just have to believe me, okay? That's not what you want to hear enough. from a history professor. Well, yeah. look, what do you want to hear from a history professor? I definitely don't want to hear, I'll try my best, you'll have to believe me. Yeah, so This is just a YouTube video. Be a little nicer to yourself. This isn't a YouTube video, this is an episode of television. That's you right. know what? This is television caliber content. And have some self-respect <laughs> for the Watcher badge. Um, say, I was about to say the same thing, but I been working. Uh, okay, all right, guys. Yeah, Watcher Entertainment. <laughs> it's quality. Watcher Entertainment. It's quality. <laughs> That's a tagline. Okay, one. moving along. <laughs> Nay, Dorothy, come, Ruth. Oh, Nay. Why, Dorothy Ruth, you're back. <laughs> yes, Professor. I'm back to thank War of Thunder for sponsoring Ooh. this episode and to tell you about the epic battles I've been waging on land, sea, and sky. I've been thinking a lot about my Flying horses. Never thought you'd see the day. Stanley Melvin lately. Before he perished, he left War Thunder open on his computer. And ever since stumbling across it, well, I've been hooked. Aren't you supposed to be uh, marrying Elmer Walter Williams? Yeah, what happened to Elmer? Who? Oh. Yes. Whoops. Is everything all right, Dorothy? Everything's fine, because I have War Thunder. I live and breathe, Walter. Man, Dorothy is having a rough day. Free multiplayer. Prince Stanley's dead, and I think Walter that lets you either and turn on him or call the same battles fate. Using ground force vehicles, aviation, and naval vessels. Every one of your vehicles can be improved by unlocking additional armor and special equipment. You can even customize them with various camouflage patterns and unique skins. I've been busy decorating my vehicles with decals like these scary skulls. In this plane, I gave teeth and eyes. I call her Stanley. There's also crazy cool detonation effects, like parts that fly off when a tank explodes, bullets that riddle aircrafts in real time, and if ammunition huh. detonates, only a turret and a crater remain. War Thunder is available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mac. Doesn't it sound like fun, Professor? 
Yeah. I don't know, Dorothy Ruth. I'm happy you found a new game, but me? Well, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Oh, are you? Are you a lover in your heart of hearts? Oh, then why are you even here? Go love. Go cry in a cloud. Or you could grow up and love war. A major update released recently. <laughs> La Royale has an entire French fleet led by the battleship Paris, the legendary BTR-80 and SU-39. War yeah, Thunder French features weapons. renowned nice. model vehicles, as well as prototype designs spanning from the beginning of the 20th century to modern day. You know what that is, Professor? That's history. <gasps> history? Huh. You know what? I'm sold. And after watching that, I really want to blow some stuff up, too. Yeah. Uh, so are you like Puppet History's official brand spokesperson? Or, Wouldn't or be surprised she was. Horse now, Dorothy Ruth? Huh. You know, I guess I have been doing a lot of these ad reads, haven't I? Yeah, you have. <laughs> I need to get my Got agent on the phone. She and now here you are. Wouldn't clip clop out of bed for less than a couple dozen oat cakes. <laughs> All oat right, cakes? well, I'm out of here. Choo choo, choo clip clop, etc. Okay, well, we'll see Hi, you Dorothy. later, Dorothy Hello. Ruth. Go anyway, games. you can download War Thunder for free using hmm. the link in the description yep. box Number below. Yep, just isn't necessary. Players, have some fun. As well as those who haven't entered War Thunder in the last six or more months will receive 100,000 silver lines. Look at this. They'll also the get a one week rental of German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles for keeps, some XP boosters, a week of War Thunder premium, and many other bonuses. So hurry up and download War Thunder, because unlike Dorothy Ruth, this sweet deal ain't coming back. Now, where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Julie. I mean, even her name's a little sus, as historians have found references to her, at least pretty sure it's her, under the names Julie. Emily, Julie Emily, and eventually La Maupin. I'm actually going to Paris for my wedding anniversary. Oh, no way. And I need to know some what? French words, so. Uh, what about, uh, uh, Je m'appelle Ryan. Je m'appelle Ryan. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle Ryan, dans des styles, la French fries. And don't forget, when you, when you do your wheeze, make sure it's real guttural. Give a nice, lee. Lee. No. Wee. 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 You got it. You're gonna blend in perfectly. <laughs> Good luck, Ryan. You're gonna now, what it. is definitely known is that mm -hmm. Julie was beautiful, with the Dublin University magazine highlighting her, quote, fine hair and aquiline nose and a mouth, teeth, aquiline and throat nose? of exquisite perfection. Let's not talk okay. about her mouth and her Hello. throat. That's strange. Julie is this post. Because she's <laughs> about to say, hell now, now, hang Take on. Take it so easy, Professor. No, no. You're not wearing any <laughs> pants. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Well, she was an opera singer. I think that's all they meant by that is, you know, uh -huh. what pipes on her, not, um, My that's sure. why that magazine wrote vulgar. what that mouth do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> now, Julie. Damn. Yeah, Doc, Professor's letting it all hang out. Really thirsting for Julie. Which, as we'll see later, probably might increase or decrease by the end of things. Which will it be? We want me to know for sure. Let's keep going. His dad worked for the Count d'Armagnac, who served in the Don't French know. royal court as King Louis XIV's master of horses. As a result, though she was not royalty herself, Julie grew up in palaces and even lived in Versailles when the court relocated there in 1682. An only child, Julie's dad ensured she received a boy's education alongside the court pages. Julie took to wearing men's clothing, enjoying the freedoms granted by passing as male in late 17th century France. Around age 12, Julie began to, to learn fencing from a master swordsman named Serran, and quickly became the best fencer in her class, perhaps yeah. aided by the fact that she would wear boys' clothing, which other girls didn't. Aren't the outfits oh. the same both ways? I guess if you, I guess if, not if back then. Dresses? They're not wearing dresses when they're fit. Sure they are. I don't <laughs> know. Probably, I don't know. Suit. You know the all white suit with the oh. fucking beekeeper mask? Hey, we gotta admit, that's gotta be one of the sexiest athletic suits, right? I mean, it shows when you know. talk to the left or right. Can't say for Absolutely. certain. Where do you guys dress? Left or right? Oh, nice. Male camel toe. I didn't even think about I'm that. I'm lefty today. You're lefty today? How about yeah, you, Ryan? I don't know. It's more down. No, it's usually right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm say. Detect. Right, yeah, it's right. Whoa, yeah. I think it is right, I don't know. Mine's up inside of me. What the fuck is Ew. this all about? <laughs> Ew. By age 14 or 15, Julie had become a mistress of her dad's boss, the Count oh. d'Armagnac. When Julie's father died, oh, she was married off to a clerk, Sieur Jean de Maupin of Saint-Germain. Well, that's two. Yeah, that's a lot. 
That's a lot of names. There's dude. a lot of guys so yeah, far. Keep it simple. Who Let's them? go with Jamal. <laughs> Jamal. <laughs> what? Soon after the nuptials, however, Count Damagnac had Jean de Maupin transferred to Paris oh. to serve as a tax collector so his affair with Julie could continue. Now, Awkward. eventually, Julie and the Count's affair petered out. Oh, and Julie took yeah, another fun. lover! Hooray! Her fencing instructor, Saran. Uh oh. Damn. Okay. Soon, however, Damn, Julie, Julie and Saran were on the run. Who? Oh, first question! Uh -oh. Why? Hey, oh, on the run. Saran had killed a dude in a duel. B. A? Jean de Maupin wanted to kill Saran in a duel. Or C, Versailles was so boring, Julie tried to burn it down. Okay. Don't think question, about that last the one. The heat is on. Oh, I feel it too. I'm very I'm feeling nervous. that heat. I'm feeling the heat today. I'm so nervous. Okay, Ryan, what do you got? I got B. I, I think a guy named John de Maupin would, would not like getting uh, cheated on. He just seems like a kind of guy to be like, no, you gotta die now. Thank you once again for giving a nice decorative border to your board. Oh, I do that when I get bored. Okay. Rude. <laughs> uh, Quasi, anyway. what do you got? I got B as well. I don't oh, really remember what, what B was, but I'm going with my third grade onomatopoeia bababia. B feels strong. B feels strong. B -boys. B -boys. Cause that gives us a couple B boys. 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 Best bit on the show. I think now this is the best bit on the show. B boys energy. Big B boys energy. You know the the B man's feeling the B boy. Yeah, the B man baby. I can't get enough B boys. Well, points to neither of you. Oh, I was just. Well, what's the dude or what was it? The answer was that Saran had killed a dude in a duel. If you can believe Call that. It. Now at this point, That's dueling it, eh? wasn't exactly the honor-based free chance to kill someone we may remember it as. Murder was murder. Doesn't matter yeah, if you follow much. some silly rules around sword fighting <laughs> decorum. Oh, it would be so fucking cool to watch yeah. to the death. I thought you were about then. to say it would be Whoops. so fucking cool to stab someone until they die. That Fuck. actually would be like, I don't think I would what? ever do that, but like the feeling of it would be like, holy shit, I just fucking stabbed that. I, mean, I don't think you should say that on camera, man. Yeah, yeah careful you, there, you Ryan. Go to prison. Well, you know, obviously you got to yep. put the circumstances right. Sure. I'm not going to yeah. walk up to a guy at a 7 Eleven and be like, hey, you like that Slurpee? <laughs> I'm not going to stab him then. Oh. But this is a guy who's like maybe murdered my mom. Fuck. While on Fair the run, enough. Julie and Saran were pursued by none other than infamous Lieutenant General of Police, Nicolas Gabriel de la Reine, oh, who longtime viewers will remember from the Affair of the Poisons episode. Oh, Booth yeah. Boy, remember La Reine? Oh, sure, his name has been yeah. locked in right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to just call him right? Taekwon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> okay, so. Ju yeah, actually, I do remember that because... He was actually the head investigator of the affair of the poisons. And he had his first break when a lady drunkly said she poisoned people for a living. It was the second episode from Garrett the Bernard. I believe. Not Garrett Watts, because that was the molasses. Yep. Great molasses flood. Anyway. So. Like, Julie's on the run. How long that's going to last? Julie and Saran bounced around the French countryside, supporting themselves with fencing demonstrations and singing at fairs and in taverns, leading the life I'll only taste in the sweetest of my dreams. Would you guys do that with your wives? No, we don't really nah. do any of that. Okay. Doesn't sound fun. No, no. We watch no a lot of TV. Yeah. There's no music in your lives? Well, we listen to music, but we're not singing. <laughs> but your hearts sing to each other, don't they? Oh, sure. Same now, Julie still preferred to dress in gentlemen's attire, and it said one spectator refused to believe she was actually a woman, as no woman could handle a sword that well. Well, Julie silenced any skeptics in the crowd uh -oh. by taking off her shirt. It's not the last time I'll say it, folks. <laughs> Julie double it. knew how to put on a show. Hello. Hey! So yeah, she just flashed the Supreme yeah, Probably. <laughs> these titties, just, these swinging swords. Just, like, that's so oh, you don't think I'm a girl? Well, so yeah. There's a guy in the <laughs> fucking audience was like, there's no way you can be a woman. You can't swing a sword like that. She was like, well, feast your eyes on oh, these. Oh, but I'm sure other people in the crowd were like, uh, yeah, I still don't believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just drops the trousers. <laughs> Fake. Oh, my they God. Were oh, man. Now, she eventually, the two Oh, God. Can you imagine just being in that bar? I was like, that that ain't no girl. And she just flashes the audience like, Woo, take it off! <laughs> that would be nowadays. But you think she kept going or like kept going with like 
Nope, don't believe it. Probably, obviously fake. It was kind of worried about the cup sites. But considering she was able to pass for a male, it's not that big. Or she had wraps, I don't know. Anyway, moving along. Settled in Marseille, but Julie grew tired of Saran and ended the relationship. <sighs> Around then, despite having no formal musical training whatsoever, but some ditties under her belt from this time as a traveling minstrel, Julie was able to book some What's roles wrong? performing the latest French musical craze, operas at the new Opera de Marseille. Her beauty and voice meant she thrived at the opera. One night, a young woman in the crowd was absolutely gobsmacked by Julie. The two women began an affair and were soon caught. The woman's father was a local merchant who, in an attempt to right his daughter's soul and get her away from Julie, sent her to a convent in Avignon. How many nuns did she fuck? Oh my god. What's the over on nuns <laughs> fucking? Well, three? <laughs> what what is three? Oh, Next question. Oh, How many nuns did she fuck? I knew it! No, I it. Hey! Oh, it. Okay, fine. Hey, so with her lover sent to a convent, what did okay, Julie fine. do? A. Oh, she started hooking up with the merchant dad. Now B. It's... She challenged the merchant dad to a sword duel. Or C. She joined the convent and then set it on fire. How? Oh, far I think I have to remember this one. Go. I'm gonna go with A. Yep, C. Burn the convent. Time. Sorry, nuns. You're homeless. I got C. Burn that fucking convict down. <laughs> okay. Oh shit! Oh, she's been violent though. She's been very, Ish. you know, open. Uh, the people you least expect sure about that? is the people who you should watch out for when it comes to arsony. Did you know they often find semen at the site of arsons? That's right, because they yeah, really I, get off on it. They do. They enjoy watching their work. I can't even imagine that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's find out. Via the Ooh, magic. Magic. Oh, yeah. Theater. Oh, Casey, you're going to love this. I'll be back in just a second. Bye bye. Right. Oh. <laughs> right. That's got to be fun. Cut this bullshit. You can't just send my latest piece of ass off to a convent. I'll show him. Oh, can I help you, child? Hi. Oh. Yes, I'm a, a wayward young woman or whatever, and I want Jesus to be my boyfriend. Can I join your convent? Word. Of course. Wow, good luck. We just had another young woman join us. Oh, yeah, where is she? Is she hot? Actually, don't worry about it. I'll find her. Okay, enjoy the, enjoy the place. Uh, Julie, is that you? What's up, babe? Oh, I'm sorry, my dad sent me to a nunnery. Oh, it's cool. I'm busting us out of here. All we need is a dead nun. Well, one uh -oh. of the nuns just died. Perfect. We'll just put her in your bed and um, uh, set her on fire. I don't understand that plan. Let's just do it. Great. <laughs> yep, they burnt the place the down. Fuck? God damn, Julie. Wow! A point for crazy! <laughs> yeah, called it. Why did she That's need her body in there? Yes, the hey, fire the served as a distraction that let the women escape. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why they had to burn uh, a nun's body to uh, do that, but... Uh, Goodness I think I was trying gracious. to oh, make sure the oh, girl... Oh, 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 oh got he's it. got something. You got it? You burn her body so they think the nameless woman is dead. Well, that could so work. when they escape, there's no one looking for them. Yeah, yeah, oh, I guess I could see that. Yeah. Or you take well, an insurance I'm policy out on a nun on the nunnery, <laughs> and then you burn the body. You get the insurance money, then you up about. You were a diabolical. There's no life insurance back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you have up right? about fifty grand. I've, I've done this before a few times. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was just thinking, why would why burn none? <laughs> Soon, however, Thelma and Julie's <laughs> plot was uncovered. Still on the run, Julie was nevertheless charged with kidnapping, stealing a dead body, and arson. Found guilty in absentia, Julie was sentenced to be burned to death. Whoa, wow. how did she survive wow. this? She how the will she survive this? That's a great question, a history point for your curiosity. I love to see. Is that a crime that's often charged to people, stealing a dead body? Yeah, that is a crime. What's the typical sentence for that? I mean, something. You can't fucking steal bodies, dude. <laughs> I just don't, I can't believe that happens often. I didn't need to tell you that. I just don't know how <laughs> often that, that would happen. Listen, I mean, it would happen quite a bit back in the day. Because then. You remember, last season, our substitute taught you a lesson about body snatching. Oh, yeah, how popular guy. it was. Uh, I mean, a band. Yeah, yeah the faker. Right? It should be. Are we, wait, <laughs> are we starting a band? No. Oh, oh, shit. The three of us? I want to be the drummer. Nah, okay. It's going to be a duo. I'm Ryan, you seem like, Ryan, you seem like a bass guitar guy. Just let me see a little air bass from you. Whoa, yeah, baby. Now, 
Now see, just like the man Julie flashed in the bar that one time, the folks who tried the absent Julie mm -hmm. underestimated her because of her gender. Well, in this case, they didn't believe a woman could possibly have abducted another woman from a convent. Oh, that's and in good. the court papers, she is referred to as Sieur de Maupin. Meanwhile, <laughs> Julie oh was in a familiar position, on the run from the law with a lover by her side, for a few months at least. After three months, the women parted ways with Julie's lover returning to her family for a spell before running away again on her own accord. Oh, Ouch. Bleeding love. All of that? You, see her oh, about, <laughs> you, you mean to tell me she burned down a convent? She went back to the And then three months later was like, nah, I'm good. Honestly, she's got to find Jesus herself. Ah. She needs to figure out how to hold a relationship. Absolutely. Okay. I feel like if she found Jesus, she'd just Perfect. flash him. She probably, probably tried to fuck Jesus. Oh my gosh. He fucked at one point. I don't think he did. He's been did fucking he? everybody did, so did, far. Did, did he fuck? They probably left that story out the Bible. Alone <laughs> and on the lamb, Julie gallivanted across the countryside dressed as a man. At a bar, Julie clashed against one Comte Louis Joseph d'Albert Luignac. Perhaps believing yeah, his foe to be a man, LJ challenged Julie to a duel and lost. Louis Joseph had been stabbed in the shoulder, but Julie had been stabbed in the heart. Metaphorically. The day yeah, after the duel, Julie found out where her opponent lived, Just nursed him back to health, and took him as her latest lover. Aww. So yeah, Damn, so Julie with the behavior of place. wanting to have sex with people that she's in a traumatic situation with. She's, yeah. yeah, she's only dating broken people. She's like basically any like problematic 20 year old dude who doesn't go to therapy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just leaves a trail of human wreckage behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And kidding. you know what? Let her have it. Exactly. Fuck it. Yeah. We've done it for generations. For Let her fucking have it. Like, you know? Yeah, she's like ideal for like Jersey Shore or That's some true. Type of sure, TV she show. set a yeah, she yeah, set yeah. a nunnery on fire. Who hasn't Fuck done it. that? Yeah, you know? yeah, Fuck yeah. it, man. For a regular day. She, she yeah, banged her dad boss, shore. so what? <laughs> yeah. She's got a hungry heart that can't she's be got quelled. She's surely uh. hungry. Mm -hmm. Now, while they're... Yikes. Like, yeah, he is. He pretty much is going for, like, the lonely ones, huh? Seriously. The odds. Well, anyway, let's see what else... What kind of else... What other misadventures does Julie get into? Their fleeting romance wasn't endgame. The two remained lifelong friends, even after Louis XIV banished LJ from France because of his life of persistent dueling. Seems like they made a little extra connection because they seem to continue to keep in touch after the fact. Well, she stabbed him That's and good, he stabbed her. Yeah, I guess when you st yeah, I did, stabbed her. <laughs> Whoops. Nasty fella. <laughs> you know you're the one that started out of control. <laughs> he stabbed her with the old meat sword. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't have to that. We got it. By now, multiple of Julie's former lovers had gotten into trouble for dueling. Perhaps recognizing the life of a traveling sword fighter is a bit rough to make a long career of, Julie decided to focus on her other primary way of getting by. Singing! <laughs> She's a gangster and she has a voice. She's got a beautiful voice. Just singing and fucking. Want... She's fucking. She's like Mick Jagger. <laughs> Probably get it. I bet you he burned down a nunnery. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Look it up. I bet you he did it. I don't think we can legally say that. Okay, I bet See, you he didn't burn down a nunnery. Look at the camera Allegedly. and say that Mick yeah. Jagger did not Mick burn Jagger down a nunnery. Burn nunnery. Oh God, why does this keep happening? <laughs> Look at the camera! Mick Just Jagger do it! <laughs> definitely did not burn down a nunnery. Okay. Allegedly. Good. Nope. Well, okay. Allegedly. <laughs> well, Allegedly. Julie tracked down a retired singing teacher mm. who encouraged her to apply to the mm. French opera in Paris. Only one thing was standing in her way. She was a wanted felon for kidnapping Ew. her ex and setting a body on fire. Unwilling okay. to let that deter her, Julie hatched a plan. Okay, now, birthday. I bet you're a bit of a gambling man. I do enjoy playing blackjack every now and then at the dollar table. What do you got in well, mind? Julie was a bit of a gambler herself, as she just kept on betting on herself. Julie's plan was to, as a felon, return to Paris and start singing at the opera, thereby getting in oh. with a bunch of rich, influential types who could maybe help her out with a lawyer or something. Now, would you guys take those odds? Yeah, yeah. I probably yeah, we'll would. See. I wouldn't bet against her. Cause think yeah, how she was, I'm, I'm fucking if I'm all this time, no, I'm about to say, that is the yeah, one Bergara code <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that I do follow. Never, it. ever bet against somebody who's willing to burn down a nunnery. Well, never bet kidding. against old Julie Daubigny because that cuckoo banana's plan worked like a bowl of lucky charms. Yes, Julie went back to Paris where she reconnected with her dead dad's old boss slash her former lover, the Count d'Armagnac 
who got oh, Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, to pardon her for burning up a nun corpse in Avignon so she could Thanks, finally Louis. perform at the opera. Do you imagine being so good at singing that you got someone to pardon you for burning down a building? Yeah, I yeah, think no uh, a lot of the, the guest hell? puppets that we have on the show would probably be pardoned for their crimes because they have such sorry, a. I'm, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, I so. yeah. well, songs are really good. He sings the songs. songs are yeah, really I'm sorry. I don't sing them. Like, what the hell is happening? Sure, sure you do. do. <laughs> well, there's so much more to this story, but I got a little question for you guys. Go for it. Hey. How old do you think Julie was at this point? See, this could be problematic. This is a free right. Mm -hmm. oh, free no. right. I don't like that this is a question because yeah. it's probably crazy young. Just look into your heart. How much time has spanned years-wise since we started the story? Well, that would sort of give away the answer. So that's not, not true. Tell you. That's not true. I just want to know how long oh, it's been. I have say. no context. You said not one year in this history show. I said some years. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. I lost track. So she was born in 1673. That's all you said. I also said well, supposedly. at which age she became a mistress of her dad's boss. Hmm. Maybe you should try paying the fuck attention, <laughs> you little bitch. I don't think so. Jeez, <laughs> okay, relax, <laughs> professor. Okay, Ryan, what do you got? 17? Ooh, I'm going 24. 17, not, you know, not Ooh. yet 18. Crazy, how about you? No, she's 19. 19. 19. Yeah, you okay. think you're an oh. adult, but not quite. You're still well? doing fuck shit. And is that a little portrait of Julie? Yeah. That's stunning. We're gonna give a point to Ryan because you got it right on the button, buddy. Oh, really? Yeah. 17? She was 17 years old, yes. Holy crap. This entire story has basically been Julie's high school experience. Still too young to legally vape, Julie had a clean record and nicotine-free set of pipes. It was time to become a star. Julie burned down some church hey, spot, yeah. yep. had sex with her dad's boss. Yeah. Stabbed a man. Yeah. And then fucked him. Pulled out her titties. She did pull <laughs> she out. She did do that. <laughs> and <laughs> sang at the opera. Yeah, Got all before 16 the years old. All before what the heck? 18. It's crazy, yeah. dude. And wow. it's been a while oh, since someone's flashed a crowd while doing music. The True. last person to do that was Lenny Kravitz, and that was several centuries later. Penis popped right out. Oh, he did. What? Yeah, ripped yeah, he had a ring on it. He had a penis struggle. ring. He was wearing tight leather pants. You can't be doing that and ripping guitar solos. What kind it's of dangerous. Do I want to know? Ring or it's like a stud ring? It's a little gold ring Can we move on, Bye. please? Nice. Well, okay. that tomboy teenager just pardoned by the king oh, after the burning hell? a nunnery? Well, believe it or not, society was absolutely in love with her. She became, quote, a general favorite and subject of conversation. Her society was universally courted and her portrait exhibited in many windows. Yeah, like putting up a stupid poster at Taylor Swift or something. Well, for her part, Julie kept on being Julie, starting an affair with a rising opera singer, Gabriel Vincent de Gabriel Vincent. Gabe was a lead singer at the Paris Opera during its early years, and he was so darn smitten with Julie that he forced the Paris Opera to give her an audition. When his skeptical co-workers heard Julie sing, they were blown away. Julie had an incredible memory for music, and some claim she had the most beautiful voice in the world. What if she sucked? I know, like right? Today, if I yeah, can't, I know. she sucks. Ah, I'm good. Like she sounds like <laughs> that's my career. Ball. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe she could have benefited from some auto tune. Who can say? That's uh, true. Say she could have put a little T Pain on it. Yeah. Dude, I bet you if T Pain <laughs> existed in this time, people would like their heads would explode. Big He'd time. be king. Well, by the time Julie debuted on stage performing as Palas in a revival of uh -oh. Cadmus Cadmus and Armion. Her exploits had already made her famous. At the end of her first performance, Julie dramatically took off her helmet. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Nice. Nice, you got all the pervs excited. Mm -hmm. You didn't think she'd take her shirt off at the Paris Opera, did you? <laughs> Honestly, be interesting as, she as did. her blonde hair dramatically unfurled from beneath the helmet, the crowd lost it. I'll say it again, folks. Julie knew how to put on a show. Well, between Amen. 1690 and 1694, Julie performed under the name La Mampin working with the greatest composers of the era and taking on the most iconic roles for women in opera. Even with all her fame, however, Julie couldn't help but get into trouble. For uh -oh. instance, one what time, happened? another actor at the opera company, Dumenil, insulted our poor, sweet Julie. What she did was she waited for Dumenil at the Place de Victoire and demanded a duel. Perhaps aware of Julie's skill with a sword, Dumenil refused. Smart. Oh. She said, meet me in the parking lot. Man, yeah, you, Julie hey, you want to talk shit? Studio, Come on, man. meet me outside. Oh, oh. Well, this question's a bit of a repeat. So, what did Julie do? Oh, here we a, go. she had King Louis XIV deport him. Oh, B, boy. she beat the shit out of him anyways. <laughs> or C, she started hooking up with him. 
The thing is, last time I went with the sex choice, and I was, I was I mistaken. So you know what? I'm just Here. gonna say. Uh, B. She beat the shit out of him. Okay. Yeah, agree. B. Uh, Beat him up. What are you putting down? I got C. Oh, so you went sex this time. Yeah, this is because of the behavior <laughs> no, you we've seen in the past. Wait a second. I'm changing my answer. Okay. Hey, I'm that? going B plus C. Oh, I think she beat the shit out of him, shit. and then she fucked him. Really you asking. know I don't do trick questions. Yeah. You do it all the time. I, I, yeah, you do. I don't remember any of those ever. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's find out via the magic of theater. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> hey, Whoa. Bye. She's a wild card. What it be? Oh, what it be? Who the fourth? What the fuck here? you say to me, dumb skull? Uh, uh oh. It's Dumenil, and I didn't say anything. You, on the other hand, called me dumb skull. Oh what? Oh, you're looking to duel right now? I'll cut you, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, oh, that's it. I'm gonna beat your ass. Oh, 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 oh hey! Oh, All right. Nice. Yeah. Julie. She beat the wig off him. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Wait. No. No, not Wait a minute. I bet you they did. No. I fucking the nailed button. it. Uh, I think, I, think no. I nailed it. Hello, everyone. Before we start rehearsal, oh. I want to clear up why I look like this. Yes, oh. I was Wait, is he going yesterday. again? Yes, my stuff box and my watch were stolen from me. I was uh, jumped. Yes, that's it. I was jumped by uh, two, no, three dudes, huge dudes. Uh, they beat me up and took Do you actually stuff. have? And uh, that's that. So let's just carry on and... Oh, Dumanil, I'm so sorry to hear three men jumped you. Must have happened right after I kicked your ass into the Industrial Revolution. Um, you're a liar and a poltroon. Here, take your shitty snuff box and watch. I'm afraid I'm going to catch being a little bitch from it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whoa, Damn. cool. Uh, that's going to be no points for either of you. Aww. Oh. I kind of, I, I feel like I should get half a point. Yeah. We'll give that's you true. an eighth of a point. That doesn't make sense. Of a point. That's okay. Yeah, yes, I kept my Dumanil point. Dumanil really tried to play off the butt whooping Julie handed him as being jumped by three dudes. That, of course, wasn't the only time Julie humiliated some bro. She had a habit of picking fights with dudes, and it's thought she killed or wounded as many as ten men in duels, which, again, was illegal. Sort of. Technically, sort those of. laws only applied to men. My oh, one mission in life is to so avoid Julie. Whoops. Yeah. Well, she's dead. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I think you'll be okay, <laughs> but you know, stay vigilant, because you never know. Like, now, eventually, Julie pushed the tolerance for her dueling habit a bit uh -oh. too far. At a royal what court ball, dressed per usual in men's attire, Julie kissed a woman that three noblemen had been pursuing all evening. Those three men separately challenged Julie oh. to duels. For efficiency, Julie told them all to meet her outside at the same time, where she defeated all three of them. Julie, yeah. there's consequences. Yeah, right there. Right? Clearly not. So far, not many. <laughs> Some reports even claim she killed the men. Now, even if the men survived, dueling was still illegal. And since she uh, yeah, publicly Julie dueled the nobleman uh -oh. at a royal court ball, Julie yet again had to flee the law. Well, between late hey, 1697 and mid 1698, Julie settled in Brussels, where she was able to pick up some more opera work. During one famous performance in a suicide scene, Julie was so locked in that she actually stabbed herself. Oh, do I need to say it? Julie Daubigny knew Whoops. how to put on a show, folks. Uh, she, she didn't die from that yeah. stab, did oh, she? Okay. I was about to say, that'd be a really shitty way to end. Yeah. yeah, yeah no I was kidding. like, that's just... it. Bye. Nice. I mean, like, Julie's knife is just taking a pit stop in her body Crap. before it goes into somebody else's <laughs> just, body. That's true. She dies yeah. accidentally. Yeah. Julie, like, here, here's some advice. <laughs> if you change the location, the behavior is still there, Julie. While in Brussels, per usual, <laughs> Julie took a lover, Maximilian II, the elector of Bavaria. Oh. Why is he bloody? All right, good luck, Max. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Max. I hope he survived this relationship. Like, he probably <laughs> yeah, won't. Dude. Ooh, hey, oh, what did Maximilian think about Julie's antics? Oh, hey, he guess. was gaga for them, and he proposed marriage once a week. B, mm -hmm. he tolerated them as long as he got to be with this opera star. Or C, he thought they were simply too much and paid her to leave him. Okay, yeah. Um, all right. I put C just because I'd never heard of that happening. But yeah, you know I'm gonna what? Go B tolerated. Really a lady of many firsts, so I, I do believe that's what happened. A lot of unprecedented things in this story. Uh, Quasi, what about you? Quasi James says A. Damn, <laughs> one for three. I think he's into toxic behavior. They're going to go down a I rabbit know. hole. 
They're gonna feed each other. Let's we'll do the Gaga sure. and Boise. then they're going Eat to tolerate. Um, finally settle down yeah, and right. have a child by mistake. Whoa! Oh, shit. Is there any part of this behavior <laughs> that you find attractive? Not until I became about I tolerate thirty. It. I was like, I need a. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I know myself now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're gonna give a history point. To Ryan. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! So this lady's a lady. demon, dude. There's no way. He's like, I gotta get rid of her. Oh, man. Take my money. Please, just leave. Yes, it's still Max leading, Million found Julie to be a bit more than he could handle, but seemingly did not have the self-control to just end it. He offered Julie 40,000 francs to leave not just him, but the whole dang country. Julie agreed to quit Belgium, but being our Julie, reportedly threw the money at Max's feet as she left. For Max's part, I imagine he mostly felt relieved. He's like, oh, oh damn, you showed me. <laughs> yeah, like, thanks for the money, Max. If he's throwing money at her and being like, please leave the country. Well, you know. I cannot control myself. He's like a bucking bronco, you know? He's yeah, hanging dude. on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he, he was the off. smartest guy in this entire yeah. story. He was yeah, like, he really fuck is. this shit. Yeah, yeah, Stop yeah. Out, dude. And take this money too, it's all good. Yeah, get it. Please don't kill me. <laughs> well, Julie kill me. made her way to you. beautiful Madrid, where she found work Madrid, as a maid babe. for a woman named Countess Marino. If this sounds to you like a job Julie would have hated, well, you're correct. One night, as she uh -oh. dressed the Countess for a grand ball, Julie secretly put radishes in her employer's hair. <laughs> I guess as a way of embarrassing the woman. Now that night, before she could be chewed out for the simply radishing hairstyle, <laughs> Julie took her leave. That's a weird Ow. one. Uh, <laughs> what what on earth is she term? getting at there? Oh, hey, oh, I've hello. got a question. <laughs> oh boy, where are we going now? What did Julie do then? A, okay. she stole a boat, sailed to England, and joined the Royal London Opera. B, she attempted to get another pardon from Louis XIV. Or C, she traveled to Italy to teach fencing to the Medici family. Ooh. Either A or B. Back to France or England, I don't know. Ryan, what do you got? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go. go with A. She hasn't stolen anything yet, so let's check all the boxes. Okay. Wow. Quizzy. I'm going I B. I got B. She continued oh. the time. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to say B, go back home. Well, hey, can you help me out here? Yeah. But one day, one those day. favors are going to run up. Oh, it's going to catch up with her. Mm -hmm. You would think. You can run and oh. run and run. But one day, your number's up. Just speaking from experience? <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. Remember Awkward. last season when uh, all the things that you did? To me. Oh, you're talking about how you deserve to die, then you came back and you learned your lesson? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a little way we razz each other. Crazy, there's a lot that's happened here, but Ryan did kill me. No, I Aww. didn't kill you. Yeah. It was an accident. It was an accident, but I'm I did very die. Sorry. I'm very sorry for accidentally kind of killing you. Yeah. Well, a point to Quasi. Yeah, hey, yeah, hell yeah. Yes. If Toxic it ain't broke, yeah, if it ain't broke don't fix it. That's yep. kind of weak. Yeah. yeah, I don't like her yep, like begging much. for like a pardon. I, I, I'd like her taking matters uh, into her she, own hands. I don't know that she had to way. beg very much. Seems like it came pretty easily. The, 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 the Lord did. No, the pardon. Yeah, the good old pardon. The king. You king Louis XIV. Oh. By the way, were they fucking? Yeah, they had to be fucking. They had Probably. to be fucking for this many pardons. I'd be surprised if no, she I was. I don't think she was fucking the king. Yeah. He was at pardoning uh -huh. because he liked her voice this much? Come on now. Maybe. You're smarter than that, professor. Yeah, because Julie yeah, would have had that That's smoke for anyone, but she can't have do? the same smoke for the king. No. It's different. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It's different. Got a little power. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't worry about that, Ryan. Getting a pardon had worked great the first time around. Thanks to a personal connection with Louis XIV's brother, Julie secured a second pardon for committing French crimes, and she moved back to Paris. The timing was fortuitous. The prima donna of French opera, La Rochoir, was retiring, meaning the company needed a woman who could sing and get butts in the seats. Le Maupin was back, baby, and now in leading roles. But didn't she have those three guys she beat in the duel after her still? It seems what like they maybe they around? weren't interested in uh, chasing her down at that point. Oh. Yeah, they, they know what happened last time. I think yeah, they learned their lesson. lesson. <laughs> they try to attack her and she yeah. <laughs> allegedly maybe even kills them all. Yeah, they don't have uh, Yeah, they're done. Now between 1698 and 1705, Le Montpont appeared in dozens of operas, opera ballets, and concerts. During this time, as many as 25 roles were written specifically for her vocal range. Now, given her fearless, devil may care oh, attitude, it may come as little surprise to learn Julie excelled at portraying goddesses. Her career-defining role being that of Medea in Francois Bouvard's Meduse. 
cool. Uh, I didn't Medeus. realize they made Tyler Perry films back then. <laughs> 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 hey! Nice, that's that's funny. Funny. I'll give you a jelly bean for that, Joe. That's funny, <laughs> nice. Thank you. The nobility Ice. and royal court would often enlist her to perform at parties, including at her childhood home, Versailles. Now, during this time, Julie used her fame and influence to better the lot of other women in the company, defending chorus girls from lecherous patrons and performers alike on numerous occasions. Of course, she could have also defended them using a sword, but I mean, come on, who wants to have to scrounge up a third pardon? And then clean up all that blood. It's a, yeah, it's a no lot kidding. of scrubbing. Well, well nevertheless, enough. Julie still found trouble. Lots of her uh -oh. former lovers lived in Paris. And when you add on the new lovers she was taking on, it seemed everyone wanted time with La Montpin, including, perhaps most frustratingly, her husband. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was Wait, what? They yeah. been married this whole time? She's been married this whole time! She got her ex-man looking at her next man, looking at the man that she with right now. <laughs> Wait, so she just never got divorced? Yeah, so Monsieur Montpin, that clerk who married Julie and then was sent away to Paris? Jamal! Well, yeah, Julie's oh, yeah. in Paris now. Oh, Jamal's back? Yeah, yeah that's what I was Yo, saying. I she never about divorced him. Jamal. Oops, nevertheless. Yo, yeah, even I forgot about Jamal. What? That's kind of a blip note, and all of a sudden he's back! And then we got it divorced? Holy hell! Like, sheesh, I completely forgot! Uh, comment down below with this time, Sam. Like, did you guys forget too? Like, honestly, whoa! Even I forgot! Anyway, we'll see where this ends up and see what happens to the husband. Plus, the presence of her betrothed did little to slow Julie down, and in 1703, she huh? began an affair with Madame la Marquise de Flanzac. Considered oh, by many Marquise to be the, quote, Defranza. most beautiful woman in France. I mean, Unfucking believable. Yeah, why not? Honestly, Damn. she sounds exhausting. It seems like Julia you're fighting no resistance. Kidding. She is she's just slow down. Down. She's yeah. running away from something. Yeah, slow she down, needs to Julie. read, like, seat of the soul. Yeah. She's just like a, a, a very extreme proxy for every problematic 20-year-old like, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> every 20-year-old dude who is problematic should watch this episode. Yeah. Dudes, yeah. ladies, the whole lot of them. Look, mm -hmm. your 20s are a fucked up time, you know? Yeah, the pain Amen. you reveal, Julie, is the pain you heal. There you go. Take that. Hey, don't run from it. Don't run from it. Don't fucking run from it. You can take that, Julie. Oh, right. And it wasn't just looks. The Marquise oh. was also rich, famous, and popular. Even King Louis' son, the Dauphin, was enamored with her, oh. causing the Marquise to flee France for a bit just oh. to let him cool his ass down. Ouch. Oh, the king's wow. son <laughs> lusting after you. You know, that little inbred Awkward. freak was no good. <laughs> I don't want my cousin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, for two years, cousin. Julie and the Marquise lived together in harmonious bliss. For once, Julie's life was relatively scandal-free, filled with a peace her exploits two, had thus far one. prevented. And, and then, then the body and... shot. No, hang on. Come on, we're waiting for Come it. Come on. Well, in July of 1705, the Marquise suddenly came down with a fever and died two days later, marking oh. a tragic and sudden end to Julie's longest relationship. Though she was currently featured in a role at the opera, in her grief, Le Maupin retired from the stage for good. I believe that is called karma. Mm. I guess so. You can't yeah. leave a trail of human wreckage your whole life. Yeah. And, and sure, it seems like some of her uh, killings were more or less justified, right? Someone says, hey, I want to duel you. I want to kill you. Well, then you're fine to kill him, right? No, mm, well, well. Yeah, it's still against the law. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Feel like, down you know, the you challenge. Be like the down the no, I'm good. I'm yeah. not talking about the law. I'm talking about, you know, the law. Yeah, oh, and I'm cosmic law. law. I'm know? scared of getting stabbed. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just good. like, I'm good. Yeah, Two years I later, to try to a nice. heartbroken Daubigny was allegedly living and repenting for her sins in a convent where it's believed she died in 1707 in her early 30s. <sighs> maybe. What? What do you mean, maybe? Other sources say that after retiring from the crowds and fame, Julie settled down to a quiet life with her husband. Now, that doesn't sound like the Julie I knew, but neither does her hanging out in a convent she wasn't trying to torch. In some ways, it doesn't really matter how or when Julie Daubigny died. Her legacy is her life. The way she seized it by the throat and shook sex, danger, and fame from it. Julie knew who she was and wasn't afraid to embody exactly that. Writing, quote, I am made for perils as well as for tenderness. Ooh, that's the Instagram caption. Yeah. That's that good. does sound yeah. like a crap caption. That's how I know to stay away. Yeah, yeah. her Strong. follow hey, probably was popping like, yo, where, I, this is where I'm at, tenderness. where you at? She probably one of those ones, like, the motivational 
speeches and who's living some ratchet ass life. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Always dropping the wisdom in the captions, but behind the scenes, absolute mess. <laughs> well, that's brain. the end of the story. What do you guys think of that one? Four points for eight. Julie nice. had an interesting life, but a really corny ass death. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, unfortunate girl. that that's yeah. the way she went. Just sort of quietly dying at a nunnery. I mean, she was probably exhausted, dude. That's true. Three I mean, decades of what debauchery, she, through, she probably surprised. needed a rest. Yeah. Well, that concludes our history lesson. Good. After our scorekeeper over there finishes up her tabulations, we'll find out who earns the coveted cap and title of history wizard. But in the meantime, enjoy the special performance from Cupid. Whoa! Bye bye. Oh, Actually, snap. Cupid? Okay, this guy's. Oh. What the hell? Stupid, can't you see? I'm gonna bet that you're familiar with my SOP. I spot a match, I think it's cute. Put my arrow back and let her loose. And not to brag, my <laughs> CRR. 360 no scope every time. And boom, true love, it's meant to be. But there's one case that's stuck in me. me. I get it. <laughs> kind of looks like old shit. Take a hit. You know how hard it is for me to find your perfect fit. You got the look, but here's the gist. It's tough to love an arsonist. There ain't a lot that you can break. There ain't a match that I can't make. But truly, truly, when I'm done, you bet your ass you'll find the one. Oh, wow. Are you looking for your one true love or just some hot princess? I try and try and leave them high and dry. I'm tired and I need a break. Won't you settle down for Cupid's sake? So I set her up with a fencing master. What an absolute disaster. She fucked up. They hit the road performing in a traveling show. She drops his ass. My arrow flies. A local catches Julie's eye. But dad gets pissed and ruins the fun. Packs her up to live with nuns. Julie's next move, it's inspired. Content set on fucking fire. And as those flames gently die, so too do Julie's. Fuck, so I knock an arrow, pull it back. Find someone who's good in the sack. I let her rip, and who's it hit? Some dude, she just stabbed ain't a bit. She drops his ass for another, for another guy. And honestly, I hey, can't I'm on. having fun. Well, I'm not the man. She's got a hungry heart, and I'm keeping her fed. Love is fleeting, so is oh, life. Fuck. God forbid she, she wants a slice. Of anyone oh. who seals a dance or Shoots her up, becoming glance. I do believe, had she the chance, she'd fuck every last soul in France. I sit you up with hunks and babes, you smooth to man, leave that out. I try and try, you leave him high and dry. I'm tired, and I need a break. Won't you settle down for cute sake? He's in your nap. Whoa! Wow! It's so rare to get like a big celebrity like Cupid. That's a that's hey, a usually go in him and objects turn puppets. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, he can't afford them. I don't think he. I think he just likes to get his little cheeks out there. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, mom, oh, wait, how's the uh, scorekeeping go? You you all right over there, mom? Hang on, she's beautiful minding. Oh, I never saw that. <laughs> hey, one. why is she yeah, going on, that far? Deacons have some respect. Oh wow, you're really brushing up on film, huh? No, I haven't seen it either. But I watched two or three YouTube video essays, and now I'm a film bro. Wow, cool. Sure. What's your favorite movie? Well, I'm working my way through them chronologically, but so far, I really like the one with the train. Oh, hang on. Your mother looks like she's oh, about to I have crunching numbers. Quasi takes this. Oh! Whoa! Right. Quasi is our history wizard. Come get your hats. We got oh. one for Beef Boy there, too. Oh, there you go. Cool. Oh. Wow. The hell? Really right. nice. What does that even Vomit say? What happened there? Feeling it on, on Ryan's yeah, it hat looks there, like but... she vomited alphabet soup onto a hat, but that's cool. It's better than Queef. <laughs> She's getting really into math. Kind of does. <laughs> what? Thank you. <laughs> really great work here. Quasi, <laughs> thank you Thanks so for much for being by, here today. Quasi. Ryan, thank you. thank you for being a friend. And to all you folks at home, thanks for watching Puppet well, History, three, where the Ooh. details are always a little fuzzy. We'll see you next week. Honk, honk. Bye. Honk, honk. Honk. Human, stupid. Eh, that was fun. <laughs> Man, I think I missed. The, I think the only one I missed actually was the, uh, well, you know, the age one. All right, Julie. I, sorry, I thought you were older. I think I got the death age, not the current age. Oops. Uh, got it. But I think it was off by a couple years.
Oh, well, I'm not mad, but I think it did pretty well. Oh, what do you guys think of Julie's story? Honestly, sheesh. That's all her, but like, I'm just gonna go hit on the next girl. Bye. <laughs> I mean, harsh, but you wanna deal with that? So, have fun, guys. You're gonna need it. Well, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Adios.